Hello. Hi. Hello. Welcome to the Mouth of Truth, a new monthly live stream from behind the scenes of Ren, the girl with the mark. Every month on the second Thursday of the month at eight o'clock UK time, we will be live talking all things Ren, updating you on the progress of the production. If you don't know, we are now in post-production on season two, which is amazing. Um, and we will be answering your questions. And today I am joined by... Me, Kate. Hi, Kate Madison here. Uh, co-creator and director of the first se uh, season and episode one director for season two. Yes. Oh, and I haven't introduced myself. Um, I'm Neil Oseman. I, uh, <laughs> I am the cinematographer and now the showrunner, um, which means um, I've got it all on my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and I am producing it and uh, hopefully making it happen. Yes. Um, so hello, everyone uh, who's watching. We've got a few comments yeah. already. That's Hi, brilliant. Kate. Hi Kate, hi Mark, hi Food Cart, how are you all doing? I hope you're good. Thank you for watching us live, that's very cool. Yes, thank you so much for tuning in. This is the first one we've done. It's the first live stream that um, we've years. done. For, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we've done a few Ren live streams in the past. Um, but yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. So welcome back everyone. And welcome to anyone who's new as well, uh, new followers. Yes. Um, I will say as well, we should be fine, sound, everything like that. But obviously, if in chat, <laughs> I mean, in theory, if you can't hear us, you probably would have said by now. But, uh, yes. but yes, but yes, let yeah. us know. Yes, the old thing of can't hear you. Can't yeah, hear you. does it work? Does it not? We're streaming for a minute or two without any sound. Yeah. Um, but yes, Andrea, hi. Um, Hello. we have a whole bunch of questions that we grabbed from various uh yes. like over the yeah. years various people asking yeah, various things to start things. with we're going to be answering your frequently asked questions um the questions that we get asked the most about ren of our youtube comments and other things like that yeah um but uh before we get to that um let's just talk a little bit about where we are now because um, season two has been filmed mm. at last. Um, and it seems like forever ago that we wrapped filming now, but I think it was it's only, only May. Six, six or seven weeks ago. Yeah, we, we started just at the end of April and we went, ran all the way through May, basically. Mm. Mm. Yes. I sp it's been two months, but still, like in comparison to nine years, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's quite a short distance. But, yes. but yeah, the bubble of filming is incredibly intense. So once yeah. it's done, it's... It's like, whoa, what was that? Yeah, yeah, it's quite an adjustment getting back to your normal life afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a few of us have had the, the post shoot blues. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. become quite. Everyone's just like, when's the next filming? Let's yeah. start filming something else. Yeah, yeah. Um, become become like a family, and uh, yeah, it's it's weird. It's a weird process. You go from being on set and there are maybe 12, 15 of you, maybe thirty or forty of you some days. Oh yeah. And then it funnels right down to editing and one or maybe two people in a room at a, at a computer. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Very so it's different. a very different stage of things. Yeah. So that is where we are at, at the moment. We are editing. Um, so uh, there are four episodes in the new season and uh, we have two editors, Kat and Arthur. Kat is doing episodes one, two and three. Arthur is doing episode four um so how's how's your episode going okay. it's going it's going well there is an assembly has been made so um the episode has been put uh like all, all of the scenes in the way the script says are there essentially mm -hmm. um but now is the case of going okay but what if and mm -hmm. or let's just grab that and actually we need this shot here mm -hmm. and um so it's it's very much the sort of like that we're starting to do the uh, I wouldn't even say necessarily the fine tuning. It's, it's very much like here's everything kind of thrown on the page, and now you start to go through mm. and go, okay, we need we need that reaction, and we need this, and so you're grabbing more of the shots and mm. filling it up, and then and then you go through and do the fine tuning and stuff later. So, mm. um, so yeah, it's the case of trying to get together. Luckily, there's you know Zoom and stuff, and I think. Uh, our, our first thing is me and Catherine is is going to be a Zoom chat and going through the rough assembly and pointing out like, oh, we, we need it. We need a shot. There should be a shot of this. There should be a shot of that um, and things. And 
definitely for uh, the big action that there is in episode one, there's a potential that we're going to take what we have, you know, that script wise and then what we shot and then go <laughs> to to make it the best possible thing that's visual because mm-hmm. um, you can write something on paper and you can film something and then you you have the edit thing and it might be like, oh, well, my vision was this. We didn't quite shoot that. So is that still the best shot for then? Or do we find something else that does that sells tells the story better and things like that? So mm-hmm. that's kind of where we're at with episode one. I have no idea where everyone else is at. Well, um, I so I haven't seen episode one at all. Obviously, I saw all the footage when I was filming it through the lens, uh, but I haven't seen any of episode one. Um, have you seen the other episodes? Put together. I have seen the very, very first rough assembly of episode two, which mm. Christopher Dane did himself. Um, and then Kat sort of took that and, and worked with that. But I haven't seen a, a later version of that. Cool. Uh, and all I've seen of episode three is one little scene uh, right. that Johnny showed me a couple of weeks ago and I haven't seen anything of episode four so, so we're all in yeah. there we're all as uh, eager to see stuff as everyone yeah. else watching yeah. I'm, I'm so curious but I want to just sort of I just want to wait and let, let the directors work I think it's good for you to have a step back yeah. so that you can come with a bit of a fresh eye after yeah. from from filming a bit, bit mm. more fresh because otherwise, the more more we all see it, the harder it is to get yeah. that perspective. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know what the plan is, but it it could be that because there's four different directors who are doing mm. their own episodes, mm. you might. I don't know if if we can. We'll all be able to potentially give a fresh eye on the other episodes, mm-hmm. and that will help tie things together as well. So that might be a thing that down the line we do as well. Yeah, no, that that is something I, I'd like to do actually. Is is get all the all the directors together and sit and watch the series and you know sort of everyone can critique each other's work a bit maybe <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah be like well i wouldn't know like that yeah it'll be interesting yeah in the nicest possible way in the nicest feedback. possible way i constructive yeah. feedback there's no point in other yeah. things but yes yeah. we're all we're all here to essentially do the same vision in the end so mm. Mm. so absolutely Axel, how are you doing and uh matty is it matty or Mid- matty yes i'm really bad Hello. at saying saying stuff and i can't read it it's, yeah. it's a bit small on our screen yes um, um thanks for your question archer so we'll, yeah we've got uh, we'll be coming to that a little bit later on um yeah so that's kind of our little intro of where we're at right yeah do you want yeah. to get into the faq let's get into the faq and the first one we've got on our list this is a question that i get a lot is are kate madison and christopher dane still involved <laughs> no i'm not really <laughs> not really um, um yeah obviously well you literally just said that we're both involved but mm. yes if uh uh if you've seen any of the sort of like fly on the wall stuff we've got our, our various um shorts and things that have been going out on social media and stuff but yes we are still involved we've just basically gone oh you want you want this huge <laughs> task to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um yeah it's it's a lot of work making a show mm. like this uh over, like for without the budget that it's meant to have and without the the sort of big big backing that it's meant to have really um and and so um i especially kind of was like uh, with all the stuff of trying to do it and then with co- with covid as well i kind of was like you know what i don't know whether this is ever gonna i think like a lot of people watching possibly mm-hmm. went mm-hmm this is not going to happen now, is it? Like, mm. I kind of gave up hope a little bit myself. Mm. Um, and, uh, but, but mm. as soon as you were like, I kind of mm. want to do it, would you let me? I was like, well, we did leave mm. it on to be continued. It would mm. be a shame, but I just don't mm. think I've got the, the personal capacity mm. to push it forward myself. Mm. Um, but was like, but I don't want to not be involved really at all. Mm. I just, I just need to like, I need to, um set my own limits of what i think i'm capable of doing at this stage mm. um because uh, i hadn't done any filmmaking f- like almost since i think mm. or for a long time mm. and i just i it needed was, a break well it was really nice to see you directing again I have it, to say. it was really yeah. cool it did spark a, <laughs> it did spark that, that filmmaking uh drive again which was nice because mm. i i kind of had gone i don't know whether i'm still doing this like mm. Um, so it was really cool. And I know afterwards, and I still like, and you do get that, 
as soon as you've stopped you're, when you're stopping filming you're like mm. you want to get straight back into mm -hmm. it and there was discussions while we were still like de-rigging the farm and stuff and taking everything it was like oh, we could do this we could do this <laughs> like of different other like little up projects and things like that mm. and um obviously that that drive disappears a little bit mm -hmm. but it's still there i keep mm -hmm. sort of going i wonder i wonder if, if we could get mm -hmm. out there and do something and um so so yes so that's very exciting and uh yeah like it's definitely um uh, re-sparked that for me mm -hmm. and it was cool to see chris step up as well because mm -hmm. from his like you know acting and writing side of things mm -hmm. to being a director because mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're both pretty sure that was his first directing thing, was, right? Yeah. So it was cool to kind of see him take the reins. Mm. Um, but yes, yeah, so he... yeah, Chris is involved as well because he's directing episode two. Yes, definitely. And hopefully we'll get him on a, on a future uh, mm -hmm. edition of this and, and talk to him a bit about that as well. And there are, um, well, we'll talk a bit more about Patreon later on, but um, there are a couple of interviews with, with Chris up on our Patreon page as well, if you'll interested to hear about uh, his take on on things but yes so they're very kate and chris very much um still involved um obviously couldn't have done it without them couldn't have imagined um and them not being involved in in, in some capacity uh yeah yeah, yeah. uh and then that, so that then brings us on to the question who else that, is involved or yeah. not involved and why yes so a, a very common question we get asked of course is uh it's about sophie skelton and duran fulton brown who played ren and hunter in season one and uh, are they coming back or, or for most of you will now have, have seen the trailer and read all the stuff and know that that they are not uh returning to the characters for season two yeah um and you know a lot of people ask us why uh and well look you know they they're amazing they they created those characters to mm -hmm. to use the sort of theater uh term um and we we love working with them on on season one um and of course we we asked them um if they wanted to come back for season two but you know they're doing other things now. Um, Life has moved on quite a long time <laughs> since we like because felt like even though the show went out on YouTube in 2016, which is still a long time ago for mm. a lot of people, we mm. only, we filmed it back in 2014. Mm. So it's it's been a while, mm. and and really and and I think for a lot of actors. Mm. Um, you know, they do a project and then they're on to the next one and on to yeah. the next one and they're always sort of thinking future and um uh, and i think and w with the fact that sophie obviously like very quickly after ren really got outlander and this mm. huge project that mm. crazily mm. at the time was like oh my gosh she's there for seven years like a seven year contract or whatever mm. it was and that's that's come to an end i'm pretty sure just mm. now like because i think episode season seven is out now yeah so yeah. so i as far as I'm aware, um, Outlander is done for her. So she's, is it not? I don't well, know I don't if know. they're doing a more according, seasons. According to my mum, there are nine books. Uh, she knows better than I do. So, they, so I maybe, know, so I, I have seasons. no idea if kind of, I, unfortunately, when they started like paywalling so much, the <laughs> Outlander thing, I'm, I've missed the last um, season. So I, I'm hoping to see it soon. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think she was contracted for about seven seasons. But yeah, if there's <laughs> nine books, of course and it's popular right so they're probably yeah. gonna keep going yeah but i have no idea but yeah. either but it, way yeah the point is they're, they're both she and joanne are at very different points in in their yeah. career now from where they were when we shot before yeah and uh yeah i mean it's it's amazing what what they're doing and, and, oh they're doing some, yeah it's great Sophie's stuff just gone gone huge and stellar and um we're so pleased for her mm. um uh but uh yeah now we have these these now two we have two amazing, more great people that we can send to the actors. stars <laughs> yes yeah um yeah so um ren is now played by uh oriana charles and uh, uh hunter is played by um alexander hackett and um they're both fantastic yes and we had such a great time working with them yeah can't wait to like you've seen them in the trailer but can't mm. wait to to show you them mm. properly yeah. as these roles yeah. because um, uh, one thing that we were very keen to do when we 
had you know when we knew we were recasting mm. was to not kind of like t- take new actors and make them kind of puppet the, mm. the characters as yeah. Sophie and Joanne yeah um so they they're still the same character but there are they bring in again their own part of things mm. and and also these characters are growing and changing mm. uh like that's kind of the whole point um mm. is that they yeah that that they are going to develop and um but it was really um i i definitely have found it really interesting watching alex because alex obviously looks wise looks very different um from duran because we we've got like oriana we we wigged her up actually like fun fun spoil not spoiler but fun easter egg maybe Mm -hmm. anyone who knows my previous projects and knows born of hope the um uh, the Elgarain wig that I wore in Born of Hope is actually the new Ren wig as well. <laughs> um, nice so character. there you go. Yeah. It all comes around. Mm. Um, but yes, so she obviously has the the look, the same look that, mm. that Sophie had in a way. I think Sophie was more like quite almost black hair, mm. very dark brown. Mm. Uh, so there's a slight change, but uh, it's l- much less prominent than than Duran to mm. Alex. Um, we didn't want to try and wig Alex up. We did try our wig, but we didn't try a blonde wig or anything. <laughs> but we, um, yeah, we were like, no, I think mm-hmm. Alex is, is gonna, is just gonna look different mm-hmm. um, so that we're not trying to to make him a Duran wannabe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and we could sort of like, and, and he could bring his own take to them. So mm-hmm. um, there are, they bring different elements of the hunter character because mm. and, and and i've sort of said that mm. the original hunter um like the way it was originally planned oh, yeah alex is close to that alex right? is actually <laughs> close to that because mm. originally it was was sort of based on a bit of a flint rider from tangled kind of mm. cheeky chappy kind of thing but mm. but what could be dark and um Alex definitely has that great personality mm. and can play that sort of that the, mm. the comic side of things mm. quite well, but mm. has a lovely dark side too. Mm. Uh, when mm. needed, you know, he can fight, he can do all the stuff he, yeah, yeah, he, he needs. Yeah, he picks up the action really well. Yeah, yeah. so it's very yeah. exciting play, yeah. working with new mm. actors. Very yeah. different for us all to sort of like, oh, mm. oh God, we got new people playing these same parts, but so well, actually, instantly I mean, they are, to me they are red and hunted yeah i know and like I, it didn't take very long at mm. all no. um that yeah it, it didn't take and maybe it was the gap in between i have no idea mm. but they just embodied those roles and it was like yep <laughs> this is red and hunter now and like i couldn't imagine them being something else so yeah it's very yeah. cool yeah uh, no, we think you're, you're going to absolutely love um, some new actors. And, uh, oh, yeah. Even I've made Grey feel very old. Oh, <laughs> you have no idea. Not as old as we feel. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, um, Eva Marie says Ori and Alex are amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, they certainly are. And uh, thank you for coming over from Germany twice, Eva, to, uh, Gosh, to work on this series. Yeah, yeah, want, wants to help build the set and wants to, to be an extra in the market. Oh my god! I don't think I realised that. That's yeah. amazing. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> this is the uh, yeah. This is the there's something there's something magical. There's something about Ren uh, that people just want to be involved in it and something come from far water. and far and wide. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, like Hans, who surprised me on mm. the day of the rap party. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> I forgot to mention to Kate that, forgot to mention. that Hans, um, who was a, a a key figure in season one, building props and being an extra and and generally being awesome, uh, was was coming over right at the end of the season two shoot. Um, yeah, <laughs> we'd all like commented on the fact that oh, it's a shame, mm. and then the doorbell rings. And and Neil was like, oh, "That'll be Hans," and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> and I, he opens the door, and I hear his voice, and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> like, it was like such a shock. But it was mm. so love a lovely shock. Yeah. But oh my goodness, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very cool. And hopefully, mm. uh, yeah, hopefully everyone will gather back again when mm. we have a screening or something. Mm. Um, Definitely. Cool. Um, thanks, Kate Sykes, for your kind words. The- detailed world we try our best mm-hmm. definitely do um fantastic um 
Right, what was the next... Uh, what? Uh, Which characters from season one are coming back? Yes, yes. Well, Ren and Hunter. We've already mentioned Ren and Hunter coming back. Yes. Um, the other big one is uh, Richard Zeman, who plays uh, Commander Othon, who didn't even have a name, actually, in season one, but he now has a name, the Kanath Commander. Oh, yeah. uh, it's Commander Othon. Um, he's back, and that was a big deal for him because he lives in Canada. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, it's a whole thing. He's been such an advocate for the project oh, yeah, for yeah. so long. Yeah, yeah. So I think it was he. Yeah, I think it was lovely for him to come back over. Mm. Um, like, yeah, he's he's set for years. He's mm. been like, how's it going? Like, mm. any any changes? Like, because because we tried pitching it to mm. play p- places. We tried different mm. things mm. over the time. Um, and and he's just always been there, right behind mm. us, sort of mm. like got our backs and stuff. So it was really cool to have him come on back over it was yeah. really good yeah definitely uh, and the master's back uh, you may yes. have spotted him in the trailer yes should uh, we say the fun fact about the master this season yeah yeah definitely. so um so so if you've watched any of the behind the scenes from last uh season if you haven't go there's so much that'll keep you going until we release the show um there's so much footage but um but we had various people playing the master on different days of shooting like just everyone like almost everyone played the master. I think at least eight people or seven or eight people played <laughs> sure. the master over the time, mm-hmm. including Christopher Dane, yeah. uh, Ronan. And Duran. Duran, that's <laughs> right. Duran played point. the master at one point. He's yeah. dressed up in all the gear. Yeah. And it's like, to, like it's not the, the, ni- the nicest of costumes. It's heavy. It's mm-hmm. so heavy. It's so many layers. Mm-hmm. It's like these basically full curtains, mm-hmm. like pulling you down as the cloak, mm-hmm. the mask, everything like that. Mm-hmm. And so it was really tough and a lot of people played the master this and and then so a lot of people played the master visually, but but voice wise, it was just one actor. We had Brian who Mm -hmm. played the voice of the master who has this wonderful voice. Mm -hmm. Um, And this season, uh, Neil asked Brian if he wanted to actually play the master. and and he said yes i don't know if he regretted it afterwards when he had to wear the outfit luckily it was one day of filming or half a day of filming uh i think if it was like four weeks or six weeks or whatever he might have been like no um but yes so he came so we actually had the voice of the master coming out of the person playing that because usually i was reading the lines off camera trying to watch and direct and various things and read in the lines and it was so nice this time to just watch the actors do their thing um, and although, you know, we did have the, oh, you have that kind of voice and we'll probably yeah. have to yeah. do some ADR to like mm-hmm. change it up. Um, but it was very cool. It was very cool. And I think he, I think he did have a really good time doing mm-hmm. it as hard as it was. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was very, very cool to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we've got various people come, but lots mm-hmm. of new faces. Lots of new faces. Lots of interesting characters you're going to yeah. meet on Renner. Because, uh, you know, it, season two is a road trip. Season one was all really set in the village and, uh, and immediately yeah. around the village. Um, but the, the I think the, the concept for Ren was always that, that then they were going to go... It was a sort of journey. World. It's yeah. always... You know, it's a hero's journey or whatever, mm. but essentially it was always going to be a journey. And the mm. the first season was the establisher and the inciting incident and all that, and mm. it was then going to turn into this, mm. um, like yeah, actual journey and also you know life character journey or whatever. Mm. Um, so yes, we always knew that. That's why we were so keen to get to the end of that season that we'd written to have them leave the village so one we didn't have to make the village again or and anything like that and and it could become this road movie style um adventure so mm-hmm. yeah we knew we'd be following ren and hunter but um but the, in the various scripts and stuff we mm-hmm. had them meeting various different people mm-hmm. um and uh yeah uh, had it become a sort of uh, I, I don't I wanted to say buddy movie, but that's not quite mm-hmm. the same. But like we had them meet a couple of other people mm-hmm. at one in one sort of incarnation. Mm-hmm. So it was going to become a group, a new group mm-hmm. traveling. And we went back to the just Ren and Hunter and they, mm-hmm. they meet these various people along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. And, as, and the commander and a few, a few familiar faces, but, mm-hmm. but most of the time yeah. we moved on. You may, you may see the odd face pop up. So yeah. Don't want to, don't want we, to we're going to keep some some spoilers yeah yeah, yeah not too much 
But yeah, it should be really cool. Yeah. So that's exciting. What's the muddy one up to these days? Max <laughs> 4078 asks. Uh, I, so someone's clearly uh, seen season one. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that would be Bainan. That would be um, James Malpas, who who played Bainan, Ren's um, little brother. He's very tall. Yes, he came, he came along to one of our making weekends when we were building the sets and things for... Oh, did he? For the I season. missed that. Yeah, yeah. So, so his father, uh, Paul Malpas... Uh, came along several times to help us um, build bits of the uh, bits of the set. And he, uh, he actually helped out day, with sound yeah, and yeah, making various he was, things. Uh, he was like boom he operating the, the day we recorded the master, actually. Yeah. Um, but yes, he brought he brought his son James along. Um, he played Bainan for one one uh, little session, and um, mm. and James uh, he had a little go on the phony pony and. Uh, <laughs> I think you might have helped to to paint or hammer a bit of stuff together. And, uh, oh, okay. And then Excellent. sadly he had to go off back to university. That's what. That's, that's the thing. What he's yeah, up like to like you feel old. Mm. Well, <laughs> just just mm. look at these yeah mm. these people who used to be so young. Mm. But, and yeah. I don't yeah and I don't I don't think he he acts much or at all anymore. I'm not 100 percent sure. Drumming is his big thing. Yeah, he's a, he's a drummer in a band. Yeah. So, so still very creative. Mm. But more musical creative but yeah 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 um so next question we've got here is will the episodes be longer mm. and and actually this um we can i guess at the same time answer the question that um uh, celeste banks had um one of our patrons uh and she was asking um uh, might we get longer episodes or might we even get a uh, a feature film um but firstly but uh, so longer episodes obviously season one uh, it was 10 minutes an episode uh season two was was written to be 10 minutes an episode i think it might turn out to be a little longer than that so tell me i don't actually know at the moment how long is episode one running so i think episode one currently is running ab- about four oh four 13 14 minutes okay I'm trying to remember what the runtime was exactly, mm. um, which may like because mm. because there's often you do a lot of tweaking to pick up pace and things like that. Yeah. So it could come down, but yeah. also um, because of re reworking some things, it could even get mm. longer mm. Um, because because especially for episode one, mm. uh, we've got quite an action sequence at the beginning, which mm. I won't tell you too much about, but. Um, so like s- scenes and dialogue scenes kind of pretty much have a fixed mm. length in a sense like you can add some dramatic pauses and mm. things like that but there's usually a fixed length um, but something like action could could get longer because mm. we could throw in more stuff or it to tighten it up and make it pacier mm. we might even crunch it down so i'm not completely certain but it's probably going to be longer than 10 minutes because mm. i think that's quite a lot to chunk up to chop out mm. um so i would say probably at least 12 minutes i reckon but yeah. no promises on any of that so you know yeah. it'll be what it will be because i'm not gonna we're not gonna make it longer just to make it longer no because no. if it drags there's that no one no one wants that no, no one wants a long episode that they're like whoa when is this over mm. like get mm. to the point <laughs> so no it's simply it's important to have the have the pace and yes it, it's it's almost always the case with editing that when you, you put it the first assembly edit when you put it all together it is longer than the, the, the final thing ends up yeah. being but so currently the the version of episode two that i saw the first assembly was 15 minutes mm. and actually episode three is 20 minutes or was 20 minutes wow. when it was first assembled i expect it's it's already shorter than that um yeah so yeah, I think even though there are only four episodes this year, you're probably going to get a season about overall. the it's same, about, about the same, possibly even a little bit longer yeah. um, than than season one was. So why not a feature well, film, though, well, Neil? Well, okay, so so well, Christi- I mean, I can Christopher, some of that. But... Christopher Dane has written uh, a feature film of Ren. He, he wrote it a few years back. Um, uh, it, it's it's very hard to get feature films. It's very hard to get anything financed and, and made um, unless you're a well-established um, production company um, with connections to, you know, big TV networks. and. and yeah. Um, I personally am not that into feature films anymore. I think TV gives you so much more freedom. I, I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, and like, a feature film, like, even a two-hour feature film, mm-hmm. like, trying to condense mm-hmm. an entire story involving Ren into a feature film 
like it's crazy that we do it really that that we can tell a, a big story in just a couple of hours mm. um and i think a lot of us are now used to that episodic mm. thing where you've got so much more time to like really like show character development and changes and not just like hi i've met you for the first time i'm deeply in love with you no i hate you <laughs> or yeah. whatever it is that a feature might have to do um so yeah i'm not I we did think about it like right right after we released mm. just as we were about to release the first season and we learned that Sophie mm. was um you know suddenly going to get skyrocketed mm. it was like oh shoot <laughs> should we mm. maybe we can like write something that fits mm. together with the first mm. season and becomes a feature mm. and then we can keep working with Sophie um but that got ruled out pretty quickly because I think contract wise and stuff, she just couldn't mm. work on, on stuff with us at that point. Mm. And, and it was like, okay, well that's not going to happen. Like if we do a feature, we have to start from scratch, like mm. rule out everything we've done before, all that hard work, mm. we would have to start absolutely again because, you know, changing an actor in an episodic thing, you can get away with it, but you can't do that in the middle of a feature <laughs> film. It just doesn't work. <laughs> no. So, um, so yeah, I think I think in the end we'll be able to give you so much more from an episodic based mm -hmm. show. I mean, the first episode, uh, first season when we put it together into an edit all in one, it was forty five minutes long. Mm -hmm. So that's like half of a feature film, and that's only like an inciting incident, essentially. <laughs> yeah, you know. So yeah. When season two comes out, you'll essentially you'll have a feature film of Rang. You can just watch season one and two together. Yeah, and that'll be. But an there's hour so and a half, much hours. more to yeah. it than that. Yeah, and that's a quick. Actually, um, I I don't know if anyone's asked this yet, but um, I think I would like to answer it anyway. Mm. Is um is is season two going to be the last season? No, no, it's definitely no. not. Um, <laughs> it is not the end of the story. Um, no way. Um, to to sort of um, uh, mince up um, Churchill's words, it's maybe it's the end of the beginning, um, but uh, it's not even the beginning of the end. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now I'm confused. But yeah, no, absolutely. The the idea is for a number more. Stro uh, I can't remember if you've set a limit on on seasons because you've written the next season, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, there are. So I've done a there's at least three. Season three. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, yeah. I mean, I yeah. I guess I can Ooh. say this. I'm so I'm sort of working working towards a, a ten season. Oh, a ten, ten season. Ten season. See, I had in my I for some reason I thought five, and I can't remember whether you told me five at one point, and I was even thinking even five doesn't seem like mm. enough to mm. to tell a big arc. Yeah. So ten, ten makes sense to me. Yeah. Um. So yes. Uh, sorry, I just want to say hi to Paula. Paul, Paula is the writer of Born of Hope, and she's oh, there in chat hi, right now. <laughs> also, also Paula is uh, the creator. Oh, we don't have any right here, but uh, is the creator of all of those quivers and all of the arrows um, that we used mm. were made uh, in Michigan and sent to to me for the use in Born of Hope, oh, and they've been that. reused. Many times <laughs> since, uh, and they are in in Ren as well, Paula. So thank you so much for doing that. So long ago, I expect you were like, mm. "Oh, these are just because I think the core is like cardboard and stuff." And mm. you were like, oh, "I just make these. Mm. They probably will last the sh the the film, and that's it." No, mm. they've been years used years later, and they're gonna keep get being used. I have them stored mm. safely in my room, and uh, yeah, they're great. They're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, but yes, um, TV. We, we love it. Ongoing, ongoing series, and I think that was a big part um, uh, for me of what I was interested in in taking on with it is that, that ability to uh, have an ongoing, um, ongoing story. Yeah. Um, Even when we were looking at pitching, or we were kind of pitching it mm. in a bigger capacity, it was still going to be a, mm. a TV version, an episodic mm. thing. Mm. But yes. Um, so we had. So I just noticed we are. We're getting some um, questions in the chat. Are you wanting to answer those questions now, or save them for mm. next Q and A, or what? I think we can. Uh, just... We can answer some of those. Okay. Um... So Mark has a question. Uh, will there be a series of Ren books? Uh, well, so there already are a couple. Um, uh, Christopher Dane has written um, the Fall of the Last North King. Um, 
which is uh, set about 100 years before um, the events of Wren. Um, and he's also written um, a, an anthology of short stories called Navithian, The Last Holder of the Hands. Um, and I'll come back to that a little bit later because um, uh, that is something you're going to be able to get hold of. Uh, well, there are, in fact, both of them are on his website, to be fair. The Fall of the North King is, um, if you want to read that, you can download it for free. Um, uh, yeah, but in terms of other books, um, no plans at the moment, but there are short stories. Um, I think, that, hell, let's just talk about Patreon now, because this this is... Yeah, this probably, we might as well talk about where you can read more about yeah. Ren, if people yeah. are interested, yeah. Uh, yeah, so for those of you who don't know, uh, Patreon is a is a crowdfunding platform, but instead of uh, being a limited time thing, you sign up um, to uh, contribute uh, a certain amount per month um, and you get ongoing uh, benefits in return for that. So it's a way to sort of join our community. And actually, the community recently voted to be called the Marked Ones. So oh, our did they? Ren patrons are now the Marked Ones <laughs> um, officially. Um, and they assume they won't be as rare as Ren. Yeah. So many. Yeah. Ones. There'll be more than 27, definitely. <laughs> uh, there are already more than 27. Um, so, uh, yes, if you want to become a marked one, you can go to our Patreon page. The link is in the description. Um, and uh, you can actually, you can uh, join for free now. So you can you can become a, a free member where you, you'll get notified every time we put a new post up. Um, or you can join um, at various kind of paid levels. Um, and a little bit later, I'll go through uh, some of the stuff you get there. But one of the big things that we do on there is every month we post either a short story or a law post, usually it's short stories. Um, and uh, it's sort of, you know, delving more into the world of Wren. So, um, so far we've had um, Young Hunter Plays It Safe, which is all about how Hunter and Liana um, first met. Uh, mm. we've had um, I haven't even read these stories even I don't even know I don't know the law that's being written <laughs> um, uh, we've had one called uh, um, the Trader from Helgoth which is all about how Torbury got the dragon fruit that he gives to Ren in season one um, uh, Ash Finn wrote one called uh, Water to the Well which is um, have read that one. which is about um, yeah and that, that, that is about um, a time in Ren's uh, childhood, a difficult time in Ren's childhood, and that ties into one of the deleted scenes that uh, you can find on our YouTube channel called uh, Distant Memories. Um, and actually this month um, you'll get part one, if you're signed up to Patreon, you'll get part one of The Retha, which is um, a longer short story, um, a longer short story, <laughs> about um, about the events immediately leading up to the start of season one. So how um, uh, Hunter and Liana, how and why they stole the Reetha. Um And uh, that actually came out of some stuff um, that, that was originally going to be in um, the script for season two. We had a bunch of flashbacks at one point to, yeah. to all that stuff. <laughs> and they were like, why are we trying <laughs> to tell this? This is crazy. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, that was one of the things that got streamlined out. But you can uh, you can now read that in story form. So yes, That's if you're cool. after if you're after um, more Ren story in prose form, then um, Patreon is definitely um, the place to go. And we we have a goal at the moment. Uh, we were just talking about um, how ultimately we want to make ten seasons of Ren. We want it to be an ongoing thing. Season two is not the end of the story. Um, and our goal currently is to get 250 paid members on Patreon. Um, and that will enable us to make a new season every two years. And if we can hit that goal, we'll we'll move on up and stretch goal it to um, make one every year. That would be the That dream. would be the ideal. Um, yeah. So if you haven't signed up to Patreon, do go check it out and, and see what's there on offer. And again, I'll go into a bit more detail Um about what we're offering on there a little later on um but let's go back to some questions yes in a minute um, so when will it be out was the next one yes uh when will season two be out it will uh, be the, it feels like that's a that's an end question oh god no. oh, okay well but, but 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 you've said it now so go yeah. for it it will be out this winter is the short answer and that that's winter in the northern hemisphere for anyone <laughs> watching from the other side of the equator who's like no it'll be out now um yeah. so yes i will 
I have a particular date in mind that we are working towards, um, but I'm not going to tell you what that is until I'm pretty confident that um, that we can. Yeah, we can I made it. that mistake. Before. Yes, yes. Previous <laughs> live stream errors that uh, yeah, yes, someone who... never set a date. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Um, so next is. Uh, yeah, is uh, do, does the story follow straight on from season one, which is yes. Mm. Um, uh, so um, it it very it, like it very much does. We do have some time jumps in season mm. two, um, but they uh, yeah, but we're they, talking days, weeks, not oh yeah. yeah, yeah, not like huge time jumps. I, like but five but, years later, <laughs> but like episode one of season two very mm. much follows straight mm. on literally they're, st they're on the hall like where mm -hmm. the to be continued is mm -hmm. is basically where we, we we start yeah um so and uh yeah so yeah absolutely it follows straight on mm -hmm. so you'll mm -hmm. get to see what happens after the to be continued moment yeah and that was always the plan you know mm -hmm. uh the odd person has suggested well you know so many years have passed in the real world. Why, why don't you, you know, sort of um, have a have a time gap in the story? But it's, you can't have an inciting incident of something so world changing for a character and mm. then jump past it mm. and be like, everything's fine now. Like that's just <laughs> the whole. To mm. me, at least, this is why I wouldn't do it. Mm. Is because you've just set up this world changing thing. Uh, and sometimes movies do this and it's the most disappointing thing ever. Like the thing that you want to see is how do they then cope with that mm. in the days that follow? Mm. Like that's absolutely what you need. If you did a jump of nine years, like she'd be, she'd already be at the end point of our story mm -hmm. because she'd already had all that time to like grow and change and things and you don't see any of it. Mm. <laughs> the, oh, that seems like the most disappointing thing ever. So yeah. um, I get where they're coming from of like just do the time jump and then you could, completely recast because they're older and stuff but mm. i think you just you lose the entire story like yeah. by doing yeah. that yeah fundamentally red is a, a, a coming of age mm. story uh a story about discovering what it is to be a marked one so there was there was no way we were gonna jump over that no no no, <laughs> no. and um i mean i think we've talked about it before but people have also with the whole cast changing they've been like what if i mean I, this was before uh, we weren't sure whether Durant like earlier when we knew it was Sophie at least people had suggested the whole like Doctor Who you know type warp into someone else and stuff like that yeah like the spirit jumps into another person but again by jumping into another person you're basically yeah. doing a new inciting incident for a new character yeah. so if, and doing a sort of warp thing is just mm. like no nah, no nah, we're mm. just going to do what a lot of shows do where mm. they just recast and you mm. go on as normal and mm. everyone just goes this is the new character now mm. and within minutes you're like yep I can't even remember who the last person was. You know, yeah. they're just, this is the new person in my head. Yeah. So, yeah, that was always the plan. Great, great chat going on about uh, swords and things. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah, maybe we'll, maybe we'll help uh, enable some other um, yeah, yeah. fantasy filmmaking. Um, uh, I think we... Uh, we do have this question. Why not? We've had a couple of people ask the same basic Yeah, thing. yeah, about the BBC and ITV. We... we um, let's answer Archer Shaw's question because yeah. we've kept uh, we've kept them waiting long enough. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Archer Shaw. We've noted your our... questions though. We see we see them. Don't worry. Yes, Archer Shaw. If we don't get to them now, we'll get to them in the next yes. live stream. We're going to yeah. be doing this every month. So yes. So Archer Shaw is a is a marked one. So uh, he's uh, he's commented on our on our um, Patreon post uh, the other week um, and. Uh, uh, I say here, I don't know. Uh, they've asked a question for both, actually. What was the one key factor that sparked New Hope to continue with another season compared to the previous Kickstarter attempt for season two? Do you want to do first, sure. Um, so, so I guess, like, I can answer, I guess, why things sort of tailed off a little bit, which sort of obvious to a certain degree, like our Kickstarter... Uh, didn't succeed um and then covid hit so all of us kind of let out a bit of a sigh of relief because this is a hard enough show to put, to do without um doing it in the midst of a pandemic mm -hmm. um also with even if we succeeded on the kickstarter the kickstarter was always planned as uh the just there's just enough money for the first i think two episodes of a or three episodes of a six episode 
thing mm. that we had planned at that time mm. um and and our big thing as well last time was we wanted to step we wanted to step up to m- n- not even match but to 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 try and match the production quality that we were creating uh with a budget that made sense for that um because we uh as so at least sure, get a little bit closer but well, that's what i mean <laughs> yeah. I, I get get a little bit closer to it because we did it mm. for such a small amount of money last time and i know mm. it doesn't show on camera which is amazing and lovely but also slightly detrimental to us because people are like but it's so good it's like yeah but it's done for nothing because like so many so all the passion that went into it um so so we tried to to push the budget up to be able to pay people a bit more what they're worth and to to have the luxury of um some uh, to to actually get props and add more costumes and various things that we knew we were needing to do for season 2 plus we had more episodes as well um anyway so all of that didn't happen and I know I personally, after all of after all the years mm. and losing Sophie and other things and COVID hitting and stuff, I personally went whoop bubble <laughs> and and kind of was like, I don't know whether I can keep mm. pushing this. It, you know, it's it's like pushing a train up a hill. It's it's hard work, mm. um, and there's a lot of lo- lovely people who want to jump on that train and cheer you on, but you're the one still pushing the train. Mm. Um, and so I I personally was like, I just, I don't think I've got this in me. I've kind of lost the, I've lost that drive to do it. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so I was like, I hated the fact that we'd left it on to be continued and it wasn't going anywhere. But I was like, I think I need to concede that this isn't going to happen. Um, and yeah, so that's where I was until <laughs> until yeah. Neil had different ideas. Yeah, I think for me it felt like unfinished business. I mean, it was it was yeah, as Kate says, tremendously disappointing when um, the Kickstarter failed in twenty twenty, um, and then yes, the whole world sort of changed, um, uh, and uh, yeah, I think um, I uh, it was. It was during one of the one of the lockdowns, the second one possibly, that I I started just trying to do another um, version of the scripts for season two, and then basically sat on it for almost two years before <laughs> I finally said to to you and to Chris, um, would you let me take this on? Um, because yeah, like you say, it is a huge thing mm. um, producing any kind of film. Really, oh, yeah. and especially one that's that's this ambitious and that requires this many people and this much planning and stuff to come together and animals and things to be built and distant locations to be travelled to and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I thought about it for a very long time um, mm. before I finally um, did anything about it. Um, and I think um, I don't know if there was just like one one sort of reason in the end i mean part of it was realizing okay well if we do if we go back to doing it on the same scale of budget that we did season one then it's a lot more achievable in terms of being able to get that uh, kind of money together um and it uh, knew it meant asking everyone to work for free again and i wasn't sure about that i mean uh, i i work as a cinematographer i'm at the stage in my career now where i i if people come to me and ask me to do unpaid work i i um turn it down straight away pretty much all the time um and i i wasn't sure whether i wanted to go back to asking other people to do that um but actually now having shot season two um and i i mentioned earlier that there's this there's some sort of magic about ren that people just people just have an amazing time working on the show and i don't know what it is exactly because when i went into making season two i thought you know i think i can make a pretty decent job of producing this show but i i'm not sure i can recreate whatever that magic was that people had such an awesome time i think you know i can i can make sure people aren't you know completely um angry or upset about (laughs) everything but i don't think i can recreate that magic but somehow i don't i'm not sure i i did anything i'm not sure where it comes from but um, it's people mm. just love working on the show for whatever reason, um, um, perhaps because it's just it, it's it's it is unique in that um, almost no one else is trying to do 
a fantasy piece on on, a, on an independent on an level. independent level made by volunteers uh, um, and the, the few others that are out there um, and you know some of those those uh, people are you know known to us and you know sort of you know um, uh, they're doing awesome stuff but um, yeah well, I think Ren's Ren's just got um, yeah it's just got something special to it yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I think I can't tell if it's us setting a bar necessarily, or everyone else coming in and mm. setting that bar, or rising to that level, or what. Mm. And I think that helps drive them a bit because mm. they're like, "Oh no, it's not just thrown together." And mm. um, and I think when you are working on a, you know, I, I've always said like <laughs> that. Yeah, film filmmaking or creative projects in general are huge. Uh, huge undertakings and so much hard work that if you're going to put in all that hard work anyway mm. like this it's not much more hard work to make something of a certain quality over something that isn't like mm. even making something you know if you grab mm. some plasticine it's still a lot of hard work to mm. make something mm. and yes it's more to make something better mm. but you're already putting in the hard work. Like mm. you want at the end to be like, oh, I'm proud of that. Not mm. why did I spend three hours <laughs> trying to make this plasticine dog mm. <laughs> that's not very good because mm. I didn't care enough, mm. for example. I don't know, it's a random analogy. Mm. But like, I think that's, to me, that's one of the things. And and I don't know if, I don't know how many people from like what, like knew about the first season and things, you know more about who you brought mm. in and stuff like that, if they oh, gave yeah. any insight. I mean, it, yeah, um, everyone knew about the first season and had seen at least some of it. Um, you know, many, pe many people um, came on because, you know, because they'd seen all of it perhaps multiple times and, and you know, um, yeah, yeah. And jumped at the chance to, to be a part of it. Yeah. Mm. So, but yeah, it is. Uh, it is, it is pretty pretty cool for all of that sort of stuff. And fingers crossed that continues as we mm. make more. Mm. Uh, I know that a lot of the people who worked on, on this, well, a lot of the people who worked on this season, some of them came back from season one, which mm. is amazing. Mm. And uh, and I think a lot of the people who worked on this season are going to want to work on the next mm. one. So, you know, mm. fingers crossed. The, I mean, one of the whole points for me of do, starting this originally was to bring a bunch of like-minded people together who all were ambitious enough to try and make this a cool project and then keep bringing them back to keep making this cool project. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's what has happened. Not as regular as I wanted it to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like, oh, every weekend, every other weekend we'll do mm -hmm. this. No. Mm -hmm. But it's it has that element mm -hmm. that uh, I know was I was so keen for it to have. So... Mm -hmm. And that is, is very cool. And I've not worked on many projects mm. that have quite that same drive. Born mm. of Hope had that mm. as well. Uh, so I have been very lucky in the projects that I've worked mm. on, which is, you know, rare. I haven't worked on loads and loads of projects, and maybe that's why. Maybe I've been lucky. But, um, but yeah, finding a bunch of like-minded people who are all very passionate about doing it, mm. um, oh, it makes such, such a difference. <laughs> such yeah. a difference. Um, Definitely. And we're, I know we're coming up to an hour now, so uh, I do just want to talk about our Patreon yes. a little bit um, uh, and sort of talking about the amazing experience that, that people have working on the show. What we're really trying to do with Patreon is get you as close to that experience as possible. Um, you know, if you can't be there on the set helping us out, obviously we're not filming right now. Um, joining our patreon it, it, we want that to be like you're joining our community you're becoming a marked one you're getting insider access um and uh you're with us on this journey and you're helping us make the show go forwards um as i say the link is in the video description you can you can check it out and see what's there on the page um, there are a few different levels that you can join at different paid levels um at the uh five dollar a month level um you get access to the patron only blog posts um and you get early access to all our videos so you get them at least a week before everyone else apart from these live streams which would require some sort of um quantum tunneling wormhole or something uh yeah <laughs> i mean yeah we don't know how to do that but that's fine like yeah. we you know you you get a lot already yeah. as a patron so yeah you know 
So the like the teaser trailer that came out, for example, um, that uh, our patrons, our marked ones, got to see that uh, a week before anyone else did, and it'll be the same when the actual episodes come out. You'll get them a week early. So if you get to the end of episode one, you can't wait to see what happens in episode two. Well, you know, the way to find out is to join <laughs> to join true. Patreon. Um, and then at the ten dollar a month, um, I was talking about this earlier. Um, monthly um, short fiction um, or law posts. Um, and I went through earlier some of the, the short stories we've had already about Liana and Hunter and Torbury. Um, we've got this big one about the Reether, stealing the Reether coming up. And um, we are about to um, streamline our uh, Patreon tiers and add a load more stuff at the $10 a month level. Um, it's currently called the uh, Mouth of Truth level, but um, it's going to get renamed. Um, we're probably just going to call it something really obvious like extra content because you're going to get a bucket load of extra content at this level. You are going to get um, exclusive monthly videos and images that previously um, have only been available at the higher levels. So there's things like um, the last one that came out was a, a full interview with Richard Zeman, who plays Commander Othon. Uh, we've had like uh, videos from the Wreckies back when we were in pre-production, um, uh, extended interviews with the directors. Um, there's a long interview with Sophie Black um, on there, a big chat that she did um, with Steph um, and uh, a couple of interviews with Christopher Dane. Uh, there's downloadable wallpapers, exclusive images of the new characters, there's a map of Alafia. Um, but we're also adding a whole bunch more stuff at that level and um, that's coming in the next um, week or two. Um, you're basically you're going to get access to a downloadable archive, basically a Google folder that contains um, all the episodes of season one, all the episodes with Kate and Chris's um, director commentaries, mm -hmm. the two deleted scenes, the two deleted scenes with Kate's commentary. Um, all 36 of the daily diary videos, which were the, the videos that we made for every single day of the season one shoot. So you get an insight into really what it was like to be on that set. Mm -hmm. um, everything from the crew larking about to like raw footage, uh, like filmmaking tips and tricks, um, interviews on the set as all kinds of um, interesting stuff on there. Larking about with um, toasting marshmallows and rodeo riding a phony pony on the last day so like many that. things <laughs> so many things um there's also some pdfs in there that you'll be able to download um Navithian, the last hold of the hands uh, christopher dane's short story anthology um that's in there um, there's a pdf download of this the making of season one photo book which is this gorgeous book that um chris created with so many photos um, and behind the scenes information um, in there you'll get the pdf version of that and you'll get a pdf of the board and the rules for doleg the guards game um, if you've seen season one episode four you'll remember um, the two guards playing that and if you keep an eye out in season two you might see it again um, so you can print out your own board and play. You can you can cheat your fellow jailers. All you need is to, to get a few counters of some kind. Um, and you can even cut out the dice from the, if you print out the PDF and make your own special um, eye and mouth uh, dice for that. Um, you can play your own guards game. Um, uh, and then the $20 a month level, um, we are going to be adding very, very soon merch. Um, a lot of people so we we ran a uh, a poll on patreon to see what uh, other benefits people would like the top one was downloads i think the second one was um oh and by the way as well as the downloads of season one as soon as season two is available you'll get a downloadable version of those episodes as well so you can watch them ad free forever um uh yes uh, and uh, i think the second second thing on the list was like um uh, bloopers so bloopers will be coming to patreon as soon as we can dig them out of the of the rushes i came across them just the other day which were really good um and merch was was way up there i think it's the third or fourth thing on the list was merchandise so yes at the 20 dollar a month level um you will be getting basically every three months for a year you'll be getting an item of ren merch it's going to be a mug a t-shirt a poster a long sleeve shirt we're designing those at the moment 
um, and international shipping is included free of charge. Um, so yes, look out for that. And if you sign up now, by the way, when we introduce these new things um, in the coming weeks, you will automatically um, get included in these. And if you've been an existing member since we launched, these things will be added with no extra charge to your membership as well, which is fantastic. Um, and then there's also, for those that are super, super fans, there's a $50 a month level where you get your name in the end credits as a Patreon producer. You get to read the scripts before the episodes are even out. Um, and the new thing we're going to be adding to that is you will get two tickets to any season premieres that happen mm -hmm. during your membership as well. And there definitely will be um, a premiere screening of season two um, shortly before it hits YouTube. Yeah, so that's uh, that's our Patreon. Please join our community and yeah uh, spread the word spread the it word, really does help fire and wine, definitely and if you can't afford to sign up with a paid membership do still follow us uh with a free membership um and uh, yeah that's, you that's keep, a great keep way up with certain things to, yes to keep up with things that are going on the other way you can keep up with what's going on of course is on social media we're on instagram we're on facebook we're on twitter if you search run the girl with a mark on any the of the links platforms. are here on youtube as well yeah the links are on youtube and probably in the well. description uh, yeah, and certainly on our uh, YouTube channel page as well. Um, yeah, and so we'll, we'll wrap it up there. As I say, this is going to be a monthly thing. It'll yes. be the second Tuesday of every month. So the next one will Thursday. be the, uh, Thursday. I'm very sorry. The second Thursday <laughs> of every month. So the next one will be the 10th of August. Uh, we will be announcing the guests for that very soon. Um, and that, that announcement will go up on our Patreon page. Uh, and you'll be able to submit questions to ask our guests um, by commenting on that Patreon post. So that's another excellent reason to sign up to uh, Patreon. Yeah, that'll be one of the, the free that'll Patreon be, posts free anyway. Post. So Yeah, yeah but yes. you don't even have to pay for that. Um, any questions that we missed today? If we can, I'm, I haven't done this for a long time, so I think we'll be able to, we'll be able to see the chat mm -hmm. after this. It's not going to be on the video, so I didn't tick that. I don't, well, I don't know if you ticked that box. Actually, maybe mm -hmm. it will be. Mm -hmm. But um, so if we can, we'll grab those questions to throw them into another time. But yeah. if you had a question, no, note it down so that you can come mm -hmm. back and ask it mm -hmm. again because, mm -hmm. yeah, we didn't manage to get to them all, which is cool mm -hmm. in a way. Sorry, mm -hmm. though, but uh, it's nice that we've got so many people wanting to know various things. So, yeah, so, yeah we'll try and we'll try and answer those on later later live streams and stuff. Yep. But, yeah, we Brilliant. Good. Well, thanks. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thank you very much. Keep yeah. your eyes peeled. If you're not already subscribed, yeah. which you probably all are, make sure you're subscribed to this, uh, to the Mythica, mm -hmm. you know, channel and like, oh, like yeah, and all yeah, that. Definitely. Because subscribe, like, uh, yeah. ring the notifications bell. All that stuff. As, it it as spreads. It helps the algorithm. It spreads the word. It more people see it, and then yeah. you get to share mm -hmm. your love of this with mm -hmm. more people. So mm -hmm. it's very, very cool. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, all right. We will see you all later. Mm -hmm. We're going to end it there and yep. yeah, see you later. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.